Hi everyone, my name is Emily Chen and today I'm going to be talking about self-care. So just to go over self-care and how it aligns with For a Safer Space and its values, um, as For a Safer as uh, For a Safer Space is an online organization that seeks to practice from an anti-oppressive stance, um, it is incredibly social justice oriented, which can be extremely draining on the practitioner to be con consistently um, advocating for clients in need. Similarly, it is time for organizations to be con constantly working within the boundaries that they are given. And it can also be extremely, self-care is also important as clients are normally dealing with um, issues that are causing a lot of stress. So self-care needs to be prioritized so that practitioners are able to build deeper relationships with clients and their own organization. So as For a Safer Space is an online organization, self-care during the time of technology is important for one's mental health. Um, yeah, so just talk about my relationship with self-care. I truly believe that self-care was something that came naturally. And in reality, self-care is something that is difficult and needs to be practiced in order for it to become habitual. So something that I've learned to do for myself and for the work that I'm doing is, um, uh, is um, practicing self-care. And for me, that kind of looks like singing, spending time with friends, working out what, in my own house or in a gym, meditating, taking long bubble baths, cooking, cleaning, um, lately I've been really into doing, um, clay making and making little clay jewelry. And then also I've been learning more about crystals and tarot cards. And, um, I found that these practices have really grounded me and have helped me take care of my, my, um, emotion, emotional, physical, and mental self. So just to go over self self-care um to define it self-care looks like doing a positive activity solely for oneself and it is things that allow the mind spirit and body to be happy and relaxed so people practice self-care in a variety of ways and what work what works for one might not work for everyone so self-care looks like setting boundaries cutting out toxic people or yeah self-care can look like setting boundaries cutting out, out toxic people and leaving negative work environments um so as you as you can see, self-care can truly be anything as long as it has a positive effect on the individual. So to talk about the importance of um, practicing self-care, uh, without self-care, people would likely end up leaving organizations or the social work practice in general. More so than other professions, social workers and their organizations should prioritize um, their individual, um, should prioritize workers' mental health and self-care. So as social workers and therapists, again, um, we are dealing with incredibly complex emotional if issues that are difficult not to take home. So self-care allows a pra the practitioner to de-stress and decompress so that they are not bringing their work-related stressors into their personal life. It also helps maintain balance in an individual's life, which helps support overall mental health. So just talk a bit about unhealthy self-care practices. Sometimes self-care practices can be unhealthy as they might make the person feel good in the moment, but can be detrimental long-term. So an example of this is alcohol. So alcohol consumed in moderation can be a self, is a self-care activity of many and can, yeah, is a um, acceptable form of self-care. However, when it is consumed excessively, um, it becomes an unhealthy practice. So some of the challenges with self-care is, can be, first of all, back to what I was just talking about, getting out of unhealthy self-care practices. So that's just checking in with yourself and thinking about the reason and the reason one might be doing a self-care practice and how one feels short-term and long-term. Um, and then also uh, checking in with yourself in order to, to determine whether you're practicing self-care often enough. So in most times people do, in most cases, people do practice some form of self-care, but they aren't doing enough or they aren't doing the um, correct type of self-care for themselves. So, in, and then in some other cases, some people might be doing too much self-care and not prioritizing, prioritizing other important responsibilities. So it can be difficult to practice self-care when you work for an organization that doesn't prioritize this. So advocating for yourself and your own mental health can be difficult as there is, can be a fear of being fired, 
or seen as lazy. And so many organizations proctor under a capitalist corporate structure um, where productivity is highly valued and self-care is not. So just, um, yeah, working on advocating for yourself and speaking to um, and advocating for your own self-care and others as well is extremely important within the social work workplace. So to, <laughs> to touch on what I was just talking about, advocating for yourself, self-advocacy is the first important skill when practicing self-care. So um, doing this in a professional or personal environment is necessary in order to make sure your personal needs are met. So the second thing I wanted to quickly touch on is self-love and appreciation. So that's learning to love yourself and find what brings you joy is a lifelong skill. Understanding, and this goes back to finding healthy self-care practices, learning what you love and what makes you happy and finding ways to love yourself and make yourself, um, yeah, finding ways to love yourself are all ways to determine whether a self-care practice is right for you. Um, so positive self-talk and performing affirmations are a way to practice and develop self-love. And it's something that I actually do quite often. I actually begin my morning with um, manifesting. I say a um, statement over and over in my head to remind myself that I am beautiful, I am strong, I'm smart. Um, those are all examples of potential manifestations, but you can really just say anything. And it, yeah, it's just essentially positive self-talk. Um, lastly, it's really important to create a long-term plan and goals for your own personal health and well-being. So thinking about how you want to feel long-term can be useful um, when, how, yeah, thinking about how you want to feel long-term can be useful when creating a, when creating short-term goals. For instance, if in the long-term you want to feel happy and content at work and you want to create a good work, uh, personal life balance, you need to create manageable small-term small term goals that will help you get there. So what can look like running three times a week and not answering work calls when you were out of the office. So these are just some resources that I found that are really useful, especially um, they touch on uh, self care steps during a pandemic, as this pandemic has created definitely a push for people to practice self care now more than ever. Um, and then the next one is just a really amazing book on self-care strategies for people in the helping profession, specifically counselors, therapists, teachers, and other health professionals. And lastly, um, the last resource is called Supporting Self-Care, and it is just um, kind of like a guide for how organizations are and how organizations and coworkers can support self-care in the workplace. And so if there are if there are any further questions, feel free to contact our general site at www.forasaferspace.org uh, and there's a contact button right at the bottom. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed.